guys, what's going on this afternoon? I'm Matt Shabert and welcome to MSU Friday Live. We're live here on Facebook and today our special guest is Moorhead State Athletics Deputy Director of Athletics, Richard Fletcher. And Richard, thank you for joining us this afternoon. Thanks, Matt. I appreciate your invitation. Yeah, so uh, Richard, obviously the, uh, the Deputy Director of Athletics right now, but you have worn, uh, and we also want to remind people before we get into questions that if uh, if you are watching today, feel free, uh, and we encourage you to ask questions uh, in the comment section uh, below here watching, and uh, we'll get to as many questions as we can during, uh, during our time here. We encourage that and um, want to be interactive here, and anything you want to ask uh, Richard today is free game, so we'll, <laughs> Thanks, we'll see how it goes. That. Right. <laughs> you don't have to answer it, though, right? <laughs> so you can say no comment, questions. right? So. I understand. Um, you've worn many hats here, if you will. Um, first of all, just kind of go back and how you got to Moorhead State. I know uh, originally you were in athletic training, uh, which is your uh, kind of your original right. field. Um, so just tell everybody, uh, you know, how you got to Moorhead State sure. and uh, what it's been like here at Moorhead State and why you decided to to stay and what you enjoy about Moorhead State. Well, I started as an undergrad here. I originally came in education major. I got a minor in athletic training, certified athletic trainer, graduated, did one year grad work, took a job locally at Rowan County Senior High School as the first athletic trainer, did that for about four years, left, took a job at University of Kentucky Sports Medicine in Lexington, Kentucky. I uh, worked there but worked as an, uh, an outreach position. I did three years with Kentucky State University, which is in Frankfurt. I worked there for three years covering all sports. After two, after three years, I came back just to UK through sports medicine, did all kinds of outreach stuff. I had an opportunity. I worked Sweet 16 basketball, some AAA hockey. Back when the Thoroughblades was here, I could do some injury ice skate, things like AAA that. AAA hockey must be fun. It was Minor enjoyable. Minor league hockey, yeah. I tell you what. Well, so. What's interesting about hockey is especially that is a lot of them are European or from right. different parts, Eastern Bloc. So you'd have these folks sitting around trying to speak English, but they're all speak. They're obviously attempting to, to talk to each other, but speaking English. So it's different a lot of broken. Yeah. yeah, you imagine those folks are 2,000, 3,000 miles from home. So most of the injuries they had was more of a more concerning that you know they aren't they're missing family and things like that. And then I had an opportunity. I finished my master's degree and uh, got a phone call. I've actually someone reached out and said, Hey, the head athletic training position at Moorhead State's open. Are you interested? And a friend of mine, Keith Webster, who is my mentor, said, Hey, why don't you uh, call them? So I made a couple phone calls and. Next thing I know, I got invited down, and they offered me a position, so I became the head athletic trainer. I came back September, or I mean August of 2011. I did that for about seven years, for seven years as a head athletic trainer, or some variations, that director of sports medicine, then moved into the compliance position, which I did by, for about 11 years. That story is kind of an interesting one. I was actually on the committee to hire that position. I always laugh and said, I'm kind of Dick Cheney. You hired yourself. Yeah, I hired right? myself. Right. Right. I, we, had, we narrowed it down to three yeah, and then it didn't, didn't, didn't work out didn't so work well. Out. It was a failed search. And then Brian Hutchinson, who was the AD at the time, said, why don't you think about taking that? So as everyone, I, I prayed about it a little bit and offered, accepted a job. And as we say, that's kind of history. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, you still do a little bit of compliance work, but as the, as the Deputy Director of Athletics, your new sort of title here in the last couple of years, what I know you've passed off compliance a little bit to Jamie Carver, uh, yes. who's doing a good job learning as well mm -hmm. in, in his first year. What are some of the other duties that you're taking on now that are new to you? Well, uh, you know, the, the thing about a small Division One program is you wear a lot of hats. So I still do coach oversight and sport oversight. I'm fortunate enough to be oversight for football, women's basketball, men's women's cross country track and field, which is indoor and uh, indoor for women as well, and then rifle, obviously, um, and then. Uh, to have coach oversight for a few of those folks and a couple other added. I also have oversight of strength conditioning and academics. So I work with the APR and APP programs with the NCAA. I do most of the reporting. I do all the Ohio Valley Conference reporting. I, I submit the EADA report. I do demographics report for the NCAA. So I, I kind of do all those things. It's kind of a lot of data. A lot of data, data yeah. and a lot of research. I kind of laugh. I, what my desk has evolved to be is that desk if there's an issue. Uh, you stop by and see me and we'll see what we can do. Either I can get you where you need to go or I'll help you with the problem. So we actually have a few questions that were submitted uh, beforehand today. And uh, you mentioned football, uh, oversight over football. But um, we had one uh, submitted on, on Twitter. What is your? I think I may know this answer, but uh, <laughs> what is your favorite NFL team and, and why? You got to yeah, got to get in the why. So. This is great. I'm yeah. I'm a Pittsburgh Steelers fan, okay. being from East Kentucky, uh, raised in the '70s. At the time, unfortunately for all you Cincinnati Bengal fans, Cincinnati was not very good. And if you remember, the NFL said if 
if you don't sell out, you can't show the games. Well, being in East Kentucky, most of our television would come from West Virginia. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, Pittsburgh is only about five yeah. hours away, so they broadcast it a lot. But my younger brother and I, I've got a Norman's my youngest brother. He's about four years younger than I. We, were, we kind of laugh and say who became the Steeler fan the first. And so I will say to people that he chose a Pittsburgh Steeler pencil out of, the, out of that big list okay. of 28 teams at the time. He chose a Steeler pencil. We kind of choked about it. Uh, and then Pop-Tarts Pop <laughs> did stickers. Oh, little, uh, back yeah. in 1977 when the Steelers actually won a Super uh -huh. Bowl, I had a bunch of stickers. I cheered for them. A friend of mine was a Cowboy fan. I cheered for the Steelers. They won it. And so I've become a Steeler fan since 1977. Wow, that's pretty, yeah. that's pretty Good. interesting. So it depends on – if you talk to Norman, he says it's because of me. If you talk to me, I say it's because of Norman and the pencil. Right. As, silly, as silly as that is. Well, um – Let's move on now to, um, you know, kind of what we teased on, on this program, and it's a pretty big deal for you uh, this year, is the, the chairperson of the NCAA Rifle Committee. Yes. So just talk a little bit about what that job entails, how you got on the committee, and then after that, we'll go into kind of how you became more interested in the sport of, uh, of rifle sure. itself. So. Well, it, NCAA has committees for all sports. I actually have committees for about everything that they do. And so a number of years ago, I had the opportunity. I actually applied for this position. So okay. they, the NCAA Rifle Committee is actually broke down to six people. They actually have seven, if you want to think about it this way. But they have six voting members, of which three are coaches and three are administrators. Well, when I applied for this position, when Brian Hutchinson was here, he was actually on the football committee. Um, so when I applied, I had him down as a reference, and I got a phone call asking me would I be interested. Well, it just so happened at that time when the positions opened up, I'm an administrator who has sport oversight for rifle, so it kind of went with a niche. You know, rifle, we have 39 teams at the right. moment, hoping to build a little more than that. So the, the numbers are relatively small. Uh, they offered me the opportunity. I was excited about the opportunity. Uh, so when I was first brought into the committee, I was just a committee member. I was again, was an administrator. But that committee, three coaches, three administrators, and then we have a rules official who's actually a, a full-time coach at Akron, uh, Newt Engel, who does a, who does a wonderful job. I, I'm always impressed with his knowledge of the sport. If I'm not mistaken, uh, I think Newt has, has he been a coach there for around yeah, 40, for long, forty some I, years. He's I been think. there a so long, long they, time. They have shot here at Morehead State Often. recently, so yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. I had the mm -hmm. fortune to meet Newt a number of years ago, even for Alan Joseph, our current mm -hmm. rifle coach. When Walt Redko was here, I, well, he they shot a goodness a few times there here at Morehead, so I had a chance to meet Newt then and just really appreciate his knowledge of the sport and the way he manages things and the way he does rules interpretation. But So then I was on the committee for two years. Um, the chair position was open, and uh, um, you just are elected amongst the committee, and so I had the opportunity to be chair for the next two years, this year and next year. I started in September of 2019 as a chair. Excited about that opportunity. What is, as you mentioned, uh, excited about the opportunity as the chairperson, what's the difference in being the chairperson and, and just being on the committee itself? Obviously, the committee has the task of uh, a number of things, but I think of, of selecting the teams that, all, that also ultimately go to the NCAA championship, right. which it, is in Lexington, It's Kentucky in Lexington this year. This year. It'll Kentucky, be so. yeah, the second week of... So you don't have to go very far. No, right, to get about, to the about 60 miles away, and kind of, again, I've worked at yeah. University of Kentucky, mm -hmm. so it's kind of a familiar area. Uh, the chairman, you're just the spokesperson, to be honest. Okay. Uh, you, you have the opportunity. I will be able to give away an award during the, during the NCAA mm -hmm. Rifle Championship, so we'll be given the, the uh, Elite Athlete Award. Um, and then you're just kind of the spokesperson for the committee. And to be honest, it's based on experience mm -hmm. and a few things like that. But yeah. We did have a question um, submitted also yesterday, um, and we'll go ahead and get to that one as well. Uh, and this goes along with this as well. Um, this could be a long answer, but you can keep it a little concise. <laughs> sure. The, the um, question that they wanted to know was, how does a college rifle match work? College, rifle is a very unique sport. It is. Um, and obviously with us just winning the Ohio Valley Conference Championship here being a, a big deal at Moorhead State. But I'll just kind of explain a little bit to our viewers um, how a rifle match works and the scoring and how teams can win, yeah. win a match. The, uh, rifle is actually scored like golf. Think of golf the very same way. So you have five people that are shooting. So in the sport of rifle, you shoot two guns. We have small bore, which is really a 22 rifle. Now, if you looked at it, you would not recognize it to be a standard rifle. It's got all these little, um, right, I've little, seen a lot little pieces of and buttons and clips and things on yeah. a huge amount. And then they also shoot air rifle. Uh, they shoot a small bore or 22 rifle at 22 at 50 feet, and they shoot small bore at 33 feet. 
Uh, you're shooting at a target that's a little larger than a silver dollar. Um, so uh, to give you an idea, the perfect score in air would be 600, same way too in small bore. So if you shoot anything other than the 10, 10 the, the size of the 10 inside that um, area is about the size of, a, of an eraser. So folks are shooting a, a pellet gun, 33 feet and hitting inside that. So they, they break it down, you have five people that shoot, the best possible score is 600. At the end of the competition, in small bore, you'll take your top four scores of the five people that shoot, You take your, your then you total that up, and then you do the same thing in small bore. Then that will give you your overall score for the match. Rifle, uh, as a sport, while there is a lot of physical uh, mm -hmm. activity, but when they're actually shooting, it's not so much physical. I mean, no. as you've seen here, what is the, the and, and Coach Joseph would be able to talk to this as well, um, the mental aspect yeah. has got to be un, almost Absolutely. as high as any sport there can yeah. be, I think. I, I, I'll go to two different examples yeah. here. It's like playing video games. If you played a video game where you're attempting to get the highest score, then all of a sudden you, you were to you lose a character or you die in the middle of it, so he's like, I just need to start over. Well, that's mm -hmm. kind of the rifle idea. Well, we're shooting, we're taking a gun, and we're shooting either 33 feet with a pellet or we're shooting 50 feet with a, with a bullet, with a 22, and we're trying to shoot the, something the size of an eraser head. As soon as I go outside of that size, I'm talking about the width of a pencil lead. As soon as I go outside of that, I shoot a nine, so the best I can shoot is a 599. If I have that to happen a couple times, how are you pushing it off? If I'm averaging a 590, which means 10 times I don't get a 10, mm -hmm. there, how, do I, how do I overcome that? So right. how in, do you build up on how the do you score? Build on the score? Mm -hmm. So if you know automatically, I've already, I'm shooting a, I'm on the last 10 shots of the hand, I'm at a 488 and my average is a 590. I already know I can't do as well as my average. Mm -hmm. How do you continue to shoot? In rifle, they talk about not really the shot, more about how many shots do you don't, do you not take? How many times are you aiming and you're thinking, okay, I'm ready to take my shot, I'm ready, I'm ready, but something doesn't feel right. How many times do you reject that shot? Mm -hmm. You know, you think about this, I'm asking you, to stay inside of a, the size of a, an eraser head from 50 feet, and you're just off by just a millimeter. Think about the think about that. I'm shooting a 9.9. .9. How do you know when I need to reject the shot versus when I should be taking the shot? It's really remarkable. Yeah, I mean to think about, like you said. Um, now, have you yourself um, done any rifle shooting yourself, or? I, maybe in another aspect of shooting yeah, sports sure. or whatever, sure. getting interested in that Absolutely. as well. So, mm -hmm. Absolutely. I'm a, mm -hmm. I'm a gun fan. I support uh, the idea of owning guns and shooting guns. I'm a big fan of those things. So, yeah, I shoot rifle, pistol, all those things. Not not to the extent they do, obviously. Right. But, yeah, my right. target's a little right. larger than what they shoot at, and I'm excited yeah. that I hit the target. Yeah. yeah. It's really impressive. Working with um, student athletes, and this was another question that we had submitted, What what's your favorite part of in your in your job um, with the, the rifle athletes and all of our athletes at Moorhead State and other athletes you've worked with, what's your favorite part of, of just strictly working with student athletes? Yeah, you know the the best part of the job is working with student athlete. I mean, I've, I have the fortune and I get a, I get to meet a lot of the prospective student athletes that come on campus. You have the opportunity to talk about why this program is important and what we what athletics means to this this institution and this administration. To watch that young person make a decision to choose more at state over some other program, then come here and then be successful. So whatever that success is, that's in the classroom or that is on the field or the court, to watch that evolve is a really, a really interesting thing and really nice thing to happen. You know, you think about this, you're, the parents are sending that prospective student to you for four, maybe five years. You have the opportunity to, to be a part of the life and to see that success. The rifle is a great example. When we hired Coach Joseph, we had a bunch of conversations about how we wanted to be competitive nationally, and we made it to that point how our goal was to win the Ohio Valley Conference. We've actually made that level, and to see it work like you hope it will work, it, it's very rewarding. What? Uh, let's talk a little bit about, um, you know, we've talked about the rifle stuff. Let's talk about um, actually your family, mm -hmm. and um, I know that uh, your wife is a nurse practitioner here in, in Moorhead. Tell, tell, a little, tell the viewers a little bit about your family and, um, like you said, how you got to Moorhead State and um, – the, kind of the rest of your family yeah. here too. So. Uh, my wife's a nurse practitioner, mm -hmm. she's Wendy Fletcher. She actually works with St. Clair Medical Center. She mm -hmm. had a private practice for about 10 years and uh, because of some insurance changes we decided to sell the private practice, went in to become part of a hospital. We actually mm -hmm. did a second transition to the hospital. 
Um, she's actually the president of the Kentucky Coalition of Nurse Practitioners and Nurse Midwives. She's been that a couple of times. She's actually, she's really a quite an incredible lady. She was voted a top 10 nurse practitioner in a country. Um, so she's done some incredible stuff. Doctorate from TCU. She's a doctorate as a nurse practitioner. My oldest daughter is married, um, goes to the University of Louisville in medical school, second year for that, doing really great, over excelling. Youngest daughter is at Lakeside Christian Academy here in town. She's a senior. We're going to be attending Morehead State. Uh, we're still in the middle of talking about nursing or uh, some type of strategic communications degree. One of those the, two. the family route. Family. <laughs> yeah, I always tell her just because I'm an athletic trainer, mom's always a nurse, and yeah. her sister is trying to be a physician, does not mean you've got to go in the medical field. Mm -hmm. Whatever's the best niche for you. I mean, I'm an athletic trainer that does compliance and now does internal operations. <laughs> so just, just choose what's best for you. See a comment coming in here on our uh, on our Facebook. Um, uh, well, you may know this person, but we will keep the name out of it right now. <laughs> but uh, maybe you can deduce who it is. Uh, they they want to know or tell the fans who your favorite coworker is. Well, that's a loaded answer. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you're good. So it, it is on your side of the building. Maybe uh, we'll do. Is that the tell Sarah I love her. She's okay, a great there it is. There, so. <laughs> Sarah, you did a great job. Yes. Yep. There we go. So, you know, that's the best part of this yeah. job. I mean, yeah. honestly, there's always tension. There's always budget cuts. Mm -hmm. You win and you lose. Ultimately, we work in a profession where you get paid to watch sports. Correct. Yeah. You get an you opportunity to travel. I've been very fortunate mm -hmm. at this role. I've been an opportunity to travel all across the United States. Um, it's been our football program. You already know, Matt, mm -hmm. we travel from California to New York to, to Florida. Yeah. So you get an yep. opportunity to travel mm -hmm. and meet, meet people. Oh, 20 years ago, folks I meet, I still bump into today. So it's been really rewarding. And the better part is colleagues, folks that you grow to love. They become part yep. of your family. You are working with them, traveling with them. They may leave for a brief period of time, but fortunately you bump into them again a little we, later on. And we've seen, you know, I've both seen, I've been here about 15 years, and you said you've been here a little bit longer yeah, than Matt. But um We've seen people come and go, Absolutely. but it always seems to be whoever's here, you know, it, it is a family, it's a, family. a family atmosphere here at Moorhead State. And like we are, we are, you know, pretty small, but we get a lot done with, I guess, with small a little, numbers. if you say. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. When I first uh, was interviewed for the position of athletic trainer, Mike Mincy brought me in and we were having a conversation. I said, well, Mike, I'm interested in the job. And, and he said, we talked about family. At the time, I had a, a five-year-old and going to have a second one, which would have been Reagan. And. And he says, well, one thing we expect is that your kids are raised in this environment. He mm -hmm. goes, if you have children, we want them here. We want them on the sideline. We want them in the mm -hmm. training room. And so the first number of years of my kids' lives, when I was working in the training center, they, when we'd use all of our tape during the summer, they would pretend like that's some kind of fort, and they would hide underneath the yeah. bottom. You'd mm -hmm. talk to all my student athletic training staff. They would play mm -hmm. with them. It's just one big family. One day, uh, my daughter Allison says to me, we were having a conversation about people coming in and out of your lives, mm -hmm. and she said, Dad, we're going to lose people. Every year we're going to lose people, aren't we? Well, that's part about athletics. You know, yeah. you bring these high school students in, and we have them for four or five years, and they move on. Same way, too, for athletic training staff. They just kind of come and go, but they're always a part of your life. And we, and another thing, we, you know, I think you agree with this. Even though those kids are here for four or five years as student athletes, they're yes. part of the Moorhead community they are. while they're here. And we, we want to make sure that, you know, we have great fans, too, but that the fans know that our student athletes are part of Absolutely. part of the community. Absolutely, and right. There's a lot of great stories uh, out there with our student athletes. Um, you know, one, like of the, the, yeah. one of the fortunate things you get to do is sometimes you get to bring student athletes out for that occasional meal, mm -hmm. which the NCAA allows as long as the compliance staff's aware of it, where you're allowed to bring a student athlete and feed them at your home. Talk about the opportunity to get to know you. Yeah, that's it, got to be neat. It's very to, rewarding. Yeah, to bring, you know, cause sometimes, and they probably enjoy that too because yeah. uh, not that, you know, the, the food is great here on campus, obviously, sure. with the rock and all the other things. But for them to get to know someone else and be able to go, because they don't get to go home, if you will, right. during their time here very often. A yeah. lot of them do, especially if they're international or from far away. Uh, so opening up your home to and having like a home cooked meal and everything's right. got to be got to be rewarding for you and for them. Too. It is yeah. a couple. I'll go really far off base mm -hmm. here. We always laugh and tell our daughters before you can date someone, they've got to have dinner at our dinner table. Oh, okay. So every young man <laughs> has to come to yeah. my house and we you find out more about a person when you're eating food with them than you will at any other time. Well, the same way too for a student athlete, they get to know you. So if you bring them to your house, they get to know everything about you. They're walking through, which is your family. They're being around your family. They're walking through your, your living room and your, your mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. And so when you feed them, they have an opportunity to get to know you not as an administrator or as a coach, but get to know you as a person. So it's very rewarding. You travel with football now, and you yes. did before. Um, 
a little different what environment. Was, right, a little different. Right. <laughs> what was your? Uh, let's see. Let's go. What was your favorite trip that you can remember taking with football? And it could be a, an aspect of that trip or or a, a destination. Yeah. And then maybe let's go a story on the other end. Maybe something that uh, you thought maybe it was a great trip, and then man, something. You know, turned yeah, out I, it wasn't. That was not the place to go. So, uh, I, yeah. so I can go back way back on this, mm-hmm. right? I can talk about my career. So, years ago, uh, Chris Swartz was the starting quarterback here. Yep. We went to Eastern mm-hmm. Kentucky University. The year before, we missed a field goal to beat Eastern Kentucky in football at home. The next year, we go down and Chris Swartz uh, breaks a record in Morehead State all-time passing yards at the time. And we beat Eastern Kentucky at Eastern Kentucky in football. Very rewarding. Was very. That when they were ranked, I think they were. They were ranked. ranked. One. Yeah, they were number so, three or something. They were pretty high that year, yeah, and, and so, I think we may have. Possibly put them out of the playoffs by doing by beating them yeah, that, that year. Part, I don't recall. I just know the the thrill of it. The year, the game before, the year before when we missed the field goal to win, it was pretty exciting. We also beat University of Cincinnati that week before. Yeah. Beat them ten nine. Our middle linebackers had like one had twenty, the other one had nineteen tackles. So then they go back and but we potentially could have beaten Cincinnati or did beat Cincinnati and then could have beaten Eastern Kentucky, which would have been an incredible year for us. So that was very rewarding. I think my most disappointing moment for football was traveling to Valparaiso a number of years ago for a chance to win the. PFL championships mm-hmm. and we played. We scored a lot of points. Yeah. We just didn't gave up, a bit gave, short. up gave up a bit short. Yeah. So that was probably the one you say. San Diego is always an enjoyable trip. It's beautiful weather and uh, so those always stand out there. Yeah. But it's always yeah. so. We had a situation there. We thought we were going to win and during playing for a championship, mm-hmm. you remember that we get there and just have some unfortunate breaks right before halftime. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's been tough, San it's Diego. Been, you know, with Eagles unable to beat San Diego, but they've had a pretty, we've been pretty a, tough program. But right. we've had a couple number of games we've been pretty close, yeah. uh, pretty close as well. So, um, well, we'll kind of, kind of go here for a few more minutes. Anything else, uh, Richard, that uh, that you want to kind of bring up and uh, or tell the fans or anybody uh, any other stories that you may have that yeah. uh, it, it, you know, let, you let's talk about tell. the student mm-hmm. athlete mm-hmm. I think that's a great conversation because when I get a prospective student athlete comes into the door and sits down and we start talking about what does Moorhead State mean to you what does it mean to the community does it matter obviously without fans showing up at our events that's the best way if you want to you want to reward a student athlete show up to a game come buy a ticket come out cheer for them I always tell people I don't care if you're cheer for me or against me just care that's the part that sports allows for everyone well we bring a student athlete athlete in let's take a football student athlete or basketball either direction you want to go we're going to ask them to participate either play in a game or practice we're going to take about 20 hours a week from that student that just means practice and play because that's what the NCAA allows so up to four hours a day uh, for a competition, 20 hours in the course of a week. We do give them a day off a week because that's required and probably necessary just to try to regain your own thoughts and time. Then we're going to ask that same student athlete to go to class. If you're taking a 15-hour schedule, you realize that they're going to be taking three hours a day, so they're going to be at least 15 hours of class schedule. Add that on top of the 20, we're now at 35 minutes. If they get injured, trust me, I'm going to have them for another 8 or 10 hours a week. Now I'm at 45 hours in that week, not to mention all the other stuff, and we call it RERA, all the required activities they have to go to. Study hall, we're going to add between 5 and 10 hours a week. So when you talk about a, a student athlete, we are saying to you, they are 55, 60 hours programmed a week. Think about your life. Think about what you do. Um, so when we talk about being successful, we're already talking about being successful. They're already managing what is a full-time job, taking classes, passing at an incredible rate. Our graduation rate inside of athletics is about 15% higher than what it is on campus. Uh, our GPAs are higher. My gosh, I think the last semester or in the fall, our GPA was above a 3.1 for 300 some athletes. As I always an average. said, you know, employers. If your employers out there. And a lot of employees, uh, employers do this, but you know, take a look at a student athlete. Absolutely. Because they know if you, especially if you have a, like a time management mm-hmm. position or something that that requires that or, or dedication or something like that, they already know that. Absolutely. And not that other people don't, but they're going to have that upper edge when they go out in yeah. the workforce. And as you know, I think there was an NCA commercial a couple of years ago about uh, being professional. Uh, not a lot of kids get to play professionally but you're you know when you graduate you're a pro in something you are and so when you talk about student athletes that's a great point because you know we have kids here that they're going to be pro in in something Mm -hmm. and they already have that basis that knowledge base to be successful just by being here at Moorhead State and Mm -hmm. going through our program and doing things that that you help them with and all of our our coaches and administrators help them with um 
they have upper upper hand right they there. Do. So, yep. yeah, I oversee cross country track and field, and talk about a dedication. So mm-hmm. those folks, even though we were required to give them a day off a week, they will they will compete seven mm-hmm. or they will mm-hmm. practice seven days a week. I had a young man ask me to do a letter of recommendation for him. Talk about the easiest letter of recommendation you can write. You're talking about people who get up and go be above and beyond. They're going to run 19 hours a week between strength training and running. They are out in cold weather. Yesterday, our track and field team was out running. I laughed. They came in. They're stripping, pull, taking sweatshirts off because they're sweating inside. They're in like, the oh, snow, my gosh. It's so much, yeah. 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 Think about dedication. I would say to them, I said, you know, we have – our tennis facility here, which is our Eagle Center, mm-hmm. you guys can run in there. It's not the same. So these mm-hmm. folks are talking about dedication. They're talking about students that have above average GPAs that are battling three sevens, three eights, successful in the classroom, successful on the field, going above and beyond. That is the easiest student to brag about. Yeah, it is. That all, pro- all programs have all them, programs. but cross country is just a great example mm-hmm. of just pure want to. Mm-hmm. Well, I think that's uh, going to uh, wrap it up here pretty quickly. Uh, uh, Richard, we want to definitely right, thank you for, for joining us and hope that you learned a little bit about um, how athletic department works, <laughs> how uh, NCA rifle works, Absolutely. and um, and and just a different perspective. On, on Can I do and, one more thing? Yeah, yeah. It, 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 Morehead State University mm-hmm. athletic department affords opportunities for internships. If you're interested in working in the sport of athletics, I'm talking from promotions compliance if you want to work in strength and conditioning if you want to work in we are tickets looking at or, tickets yeah, yeah mm-hmm. operations if you had that interest if this is something if you're sitting at your couch now or on your chair and thinking man what i would love to work in athletics because again i get paid to watch sports or for your son or daughter or your son or daughter or a friend or anybody yeah. that's here already we yeah. actually mm-hmm. on our website we have an opportunity for people who want to do internships now those internships may be through for academic credit or it may be you just want experience often People call me and say, tell me about this person. If they work for you, do they do a good job? I will tell you, I would much rather have someone that has two or three years of working experience. Don't have to know everything about it, but just an inside working idea that they know how to manage tickets or they know how to manage uh, ushering. Mm -hmm. As simple as that sounds, there's an etiquette to it. There's a way we do these things. It may nothing may not be rock, it may not anywhere be near rocket science, but nevertheless, it's something we can do. If you have interest in athletics, you want to get experience. Morehead State University affords that opportunity. Please contact us. Go to our website. I'm Richard Fletcher, R. Period Fletcher at MoreheadState.edu. Tweet it, whatever. We will find you coming down. We'll give you an opportunity. Great We're point. looking for you now. Great point. Yep. And rather than a bigger school, where you may not be afforded Absolutely. that opportunity. You might literally be licking envelopes yeah. and sitting in an office. I think here we give you an opportunity to actually do. You do. It's hands-on. Do the hands-on. Uh, in compliance, you will have the opportunity to learn from violations to how to manage compliance assistant, all those things. When you leave Morehead State University, you'll be ready to do a graduate assistant position with no problems at all. And actually, you will leave here with the opportunity to accept a job as an entry-level compliance person because you get the experience that you need. Great point again. So appreciate it, Richard. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Again, this is MS Ben, MSU Friday Live with Deputy Director of Athletics Richard Fletcher. And we do this or try to do this. We missed last week because of weather. Uh, Every Friday, we'll have different coaches, administrators, some student athletes on. Uh, Ryan Fry is the normal host, so he'll be back, (laughs) uh, should be back hopefully uh, coming up. But uh, glad to sit in uh, this afternoon. Make sure you follow us on social media as well. It's MSU Eagles on Facebook, Twitter, uh, and Instagram uh, as well. And our YouTube channel, MSU Eagles, which uh, you can see this video. Uh, there's a, be an archive of all these videos on YouTube as well as highlights and a lot of other things on our revamped um, YouTube channel. So once again, I'm Matt Shaver. He's Richard Fletcher. Thank you for watching. <laughs>